Wow, I am so excited about our lineup of speakers uh, for this uh, year's Innovations in Tobacco Control uh, seminar series. And I'm particularly looking forward to today's lecture by Dr. Toyen Tseng. Uh, my name is Joanna Cohn. I'm director of the Institute for Global Tobacco Control. And I'd like to say a few words about Dr. Tseng before she uh, starts. Um, Toyen is a faculty member in uh, here at the Bloomberg School of Public Health in the Department of Health, Behavior and Society. She received her PhD in the Social and Behavioral Sciences here at Hopkins, and she did her MA in Psychology at New York University. Uh, Dr. Tseng has over 15 years of experience working on research and interventions to support health behavior change, also on increasing treatment access and care quality, improving health equity, and evaluating and promoting health policy and guideline implementation. And she has done this both in domestic and international settings. Uh, Dr. Tseng has contributed to tobacco control related projects for over a decade. And her research utilizes both qualitative and quantitative methods to investigate the impacts of social and environmental factors on health. And I am so pleased that she's going to talk to us today about capsule cigarette sales in Mexico and um, some of the work that she's been doing lately. So, Toyen, welcome and over to you. Thank you, Joanna, so much for the nice introduction. And thanks everyone for joining. It is my pleasure to be here today. I'd like to first acknowledge all my co-authors that were listed on the title slide, Kevin, Berlin, Grazi, and Joanna, and our founder, Bloomberg Initiative to Reduce Tobacco Use. Our team has no personal financial relationships with commercial interests to disclose. Flavor capsule cigarettes were first seen in the market in Japan in 2007. These are cigarettes that contain tiny flu fluid filled capsules in their filters that can be crushed to release flavors. They are designed to allow users to interact with the cigarette and to customize their smoking experience. Here are some pictures of a capsule cigarette and what the capsule inside looks like when you peel open the filter part. And on the bottom left is a capsule cigarette design from a tobacco company's patent application. Capsules in cigarettes come in different sizes and flavors, as you can see on this slide. The different sizes of the capsules often reflect the size and length variation of the cigarette sticks. Bigger capsules contain larger amount of flavoring liquid. And as you can see in this picture, some cigarettes have two or more, or two or even more capsules, like the Pomo cigarettes with three capsules here to release different flavors. These different flavors can be indicated by different colors on the cigarette packs and on the sticks. In fact, Tobacco companies have patented a wide range of capsules and filter designs beyond what we are seeing here. Some of these designs already exist in certain markets. Others could potentially be used in future products. Some examples of these designs include um, capsules that could adjust airflow and uh, flavor intensity. Filters that can be pulled, twisted, or crushed to modify nicotine delivery and flavor, and flavor capsule units designed to be inserted into a cigarette and have the potential to go around flavor bands if the band is not comprehensive enough to regulate accessories sold separately from cigarettes, which is the case we are seeing in the UK, where menthol and other flavor cigarettes are banned but the ban does not cover loose accessories, creating a loophole for tobacco companies to sell loose flavor capsule units, as well as cigarettes that are specially designed to fit those uh, loose capsule units. Capsule cigarettes are often described as novel, cool, 
um, or high tech. Here are some quotes from previous qualitative research. Because you're smoking a cigarette and then all of a sudden it's like chewing gum. It's a bit like a designer cigarette, a kind of young person cigarette. I just think it's quite cool personally, the fact it clicks and it changes flavor and all. Capsule cigarettes have been associated with better taste, fresher breath, reduced smell, and being smoother on the throat. Here are some quotes. My grandmother bought them and I smelled the scent of the cucumber flavor capsule and said, I want to try them. I used to smoke them more at school because the smell is less. You're less likely to get caught. There are also misconceptions of reduced harm related to capsule cigarettes. This person said, less harmful because it's got a wee button, this wee cool invention. Research shows that capsule cigarettes are preferred over regular unflavored cigarettes by people who don't smoke, including those who have quit and who smoke occasionally. This suggests that there's a potential for capsule cigarettes to increase overall smoking prevalence and nicotine dependence. In addition, capsule cigarettes are particularly appealing to women and youth. These are groups that traditionally have lower smoking rates. A 2015 survey with over 10,000 Mexican middle schoolers found associations of capsule cigarettes with greater attractiveness and interest to try. Tobacco companies have been strategically promoting capsule cigarettes that help entice new users and expand their market. For example, in Mexico, research found that the aggressive introduction of capsule cigarettes was one of the key contributors to the rapid growth of Pomo which is a leading brand of British American tobacco. Studies suggest that tobacco companies use descriptors to explicitly or implicitly communicate flavors, technological innovation, including action terms indicating the interactive aspects of capsules in the cigarettes and other product appeal. For example, this cigarette package here in the picture says, um, click to release the freshness. Cigarette length and pack sizes are also used to influence consumer perceptions. In addition, different pricing strategies are adopted by manufacturers to promote capsule cigarettes. Globally, capsule cigarettes represent the fastest growing segment of the combustible tobacco market, especially in Latin America. This chart shows the countries with the highest market shares for capsule cigarettes in the world from 2008 to 2018, estimated by Euromonitor Passport. And the top five are all Latin American countries. On the top of this chart is the red line for Chile, followed by Guatemala, the dashed dark blue line, Peru, the dotted, dark blue line, Mexico, the light blue line, and Argentina, the dashed brown line. Based on these estimates, one out of four cigarettes sold in Mexico and one out of three cigarettes sold in Peru in 2018 was a flavored capsule cigarette. And in Chile, close to half of the cigarettes sold were flavored capsule cigarettes. Our research is interested in understanding the capsule cigarette market in Mexico. We hope to gain a deeper understanding of tactics used by the tobacco industry and to help inform evidence-based policies. Currently, there's a lack of good monitoring of the capsule cigarette market in Mexico. As recent national surveys have failed to capture data on capsule cigarettes, 
since the 2018 Mexico National Survey of Health and Nutrition. In addition, little is known about the size that capsule cigarettes play within the flavored cigarette market and the use of descriptors on packs of capsule cigarettes due to lack of detailed information on brand variants. The objective of this research was to fill the gaps in the literature by describing the trends of capsule cigarette sales in Mexico in the recent years, as well as sales patterns by product characteristics. Specifically, we analyzed the market share of capsule cigarettes by product characteristics and compared it with unflavored cigarettes and flavored non-capsule cigarettes. Trends in capsule cigarette market share over time and capsule cigarette sales, a number of unique brand variants by major cigarette manufacturers in Mexico. Data analyzed in this research were national cigarette sales data in Mexico between October 2018 and September 2021 licensed from Nielsen Consumer LLC, which is a global marketing research firm. In this data set, different data collection methods were used based on vendor type. Point of sale scanner data were collected for modern trade channels, including supermarkets, convenience stores, pharmacies, and government owned retail outlets. For traditional trade channels, including traditional stores, mini marts, booths, and kiosks, field auditors visited the stores on a monthly basis to report retailer stocks, purchases, inventory, and in-store conditions to calculate sales. Dollar sales value and sales volume were aggregated by month. Product characteristics tracked by Nielsen included manufacturer, brand, words on cigarette packs, flavor, pack size, cigarette length, price tier, and presence of capsule. However, information provided around flavor was limited and did not document flavors other than tobacco or menthol flavors. So we reviewed descriptors in the product presentation provided by Nielsen for each product to determine whether characterizing and concept flavor descriptors were used and classified each product into flavored or unflavored cigarettes accordingly. We examined three types of descriptors, characterizing flavor descriptors, concept flavor descriptors, and action descriptors. I'll get to the details of each descriptor on the next slides. Characterizing flavor descriptors were defined as terms that directly named a fruit, food, beverage, spice, or other known flavor. In the pictures here, the words menthol, mint, and kretek on the cigarette packs are characterizing flavor descriptors because they directly name the flavors. Concept flavor descriptors were those denoting a taste, aroma, or sensation that is not a specific fruit, food, beverage, spice, or other known flavor. Because descriptors on packaging could be used to communicate other characteristics, such as strength, we conducted internet searches to confirm whether a descriptor was intended to imply fla flavors. The picture on the left here is a cigarette pack with concept descriptors, electric blue and comet, in combination with the color and image of splashes to imply a flavor and sensation that is not directly named. Similarly, on the pack in the middle, the concept descriptor Mega Ice Express is also used to communicate flavor. On the right is another example. The pack says New York Moonrise. Even though it doesn't direct, directly tell the flavor, 
the descriptor in combination with the blue and yellow colors for the text and the illustration suggests that the cigarette contains two capsules with different flavors. In addition, we identified descriptors that conveyed actions. Action descriptors were defined as indicators related to the interactive aspects of capsules in cigarettes and confirmed by packed photos taken in five major Mexican cities during the months of October and November in 2021. For example, in the picture on the left, the word fusion on the cigarette pack is an action descriptor because it is displayed next to the bow illustration indicating capsules. You might also notice that the word ruby here on the cigarette pack is a concept flavor descriptor. The use of color scheme, color scheme in combination with the text and the illustration to imply flavors is the same tactic that we just saw by Pomo on the previous slide. And if you look at the inner frame of the cigarette pack under the flip top here, you can see an illustration of the two colors fusing together, indicating actions related to the capsules. Similarly, on the packs on the right, the words remix and activa in combination with the bow illustrations are also used to communicate actions related to the capsules in cigarettes. We examined both sales volume and sales value. Sales volume was assessed in number of sticks sold and sales value was assessed in dollar amount. When evaluating market share, volume share was calculated by dividing the number of sticks sold in a particular category by the total number of sticks sold. And value share was calculated by dividing the dollar value of sales in a particular category by the dollar value of the total sales. Now moving on to the results. From October 2018 to September 2021, almost 31 billion sticks of capsule cigarettes were sold in Mexico, accounting for 35% of all cigarettes sold. When sales dollar value was assessed, a similar pattern was observed. Capsule cigarette sales totaled 4.3 billion US dollars during this time comprising 38% of the total cigarette market share. 54 concept flavor descriptors were identified. Some common categories included colors such as black, purple, and blue, and words indicating cool or fresh. 57.2% of capsule cigarettes sold during this period had concept flavor descriptors. Three characterizing flavor descriptors were identified. These were mint, men menthol, and cratic. 17.8% of capsule cigarettes sold during this period had uh, characterizing flavor descriptors. And 12 action descriptors were identified 15.1% of capsule cigarettes sold during this period had action descriptors. Some examples are fusion, click, remix, convertible. We analyzed sales by product characteristics, comparing capsule cigarettes on the right with unflavored cigarettes on the left and flavored non-capsule cigarettes in the middle. The red bars show that longer sticks with a length of 99 to 100 millimeters were more popular among capsule cigarettes. In comparison, unflavored cigarettes and flavored non-capsule cigarettes were more popular in lengths of 80 and 83 millimeters, indicated by the blue bars. 
We also analyzed sales by price tier. You might remember my colleague Bolan mentioned in last month's lecture that price tiers are often used by the tobacco industry to categorize their brands as a strategy to segment the tobacco market and to offer products to different consumer types. Although different companies call their price tiers differently, for practical purposes, these are summarized into four segments in the Nielsen data set. This table shows the average price per pack and per cigarette for each price tier. You can see that the premium brands have the highest prices followed by value for money, low and ultra low price tiers. When we looked at sales by price tier, most capsule cigarette brands were marketed in higher price tiers shown by the yellow and the red bars. Only 2% of all capsule cigarettes sold were priced in low or very low tiers, shown by the blue and the gray bars, compared with 43% for unflavored cigarettes and 35% for flavored non-capsule cigarettes in those ca categories combined. We examined monthly share of capsule cigarette sales among all cigarettes and among flavored cigarettes, both by dollar sales value and sales volume. The pink and red lines on the top of this graph show that, that capsule cigarettes made up most of the flavored cigarette sales, over 97% throughout this period. And the trend was flat over time. Looking at the market share for capsule cigarettes among all cigarette sales on the bottom half of this graph, value share, which is the lighter blue line, was higher than volume share, the darker blue line. And this is because of the higher prices of capsule cigarettes in comparison with um, non-capsule cigarettes. Both lines here were parallel and steadily increased from October 2018 to September 2021. By September 2021, the monthly market share of capsule cigarettes among all cigarette sales was up to 37.3% by sales volume and 39.9% by sales value. We identified the three top selling manufacturers in Mexico during this time period. These are Philip Morris Mexico or PMM. Some of their major brands you might have heard of include Marlboro and Chesterfield. British American Tobacco or BAT. Their leading brands are Pomo and Lucky Strike. Japan Tobacco International or JTI. Their brands include Camel and Winston. We then examined um, the unflavored, flavored non-capsule and capsule cigarette sales in Mexico by these three top selling manufacturers. This chart shows that PMM led the overall cigarette sales in Mexico between October 2018 and September 2021, followed by BAD and then JTI. While PMM had the largest cigarette market share overall across manufacturers, BAT sold the majority of the capsule cigarettes. This is indicated by the, the blue segments of the bars here. All three manufacturers saw a substantial increase in monthly capsule cigarette sales from October 2018 to September 2021. For BAT, a 28% growth from 52 million to 67 million US dollars. And for PMM, a 29% growth from 49 million to 63 million US dollars. And even though the line for JTI looks very flat, the monthly sales actually went from less than 800,000 to 1.5 million US dollars, almost doubled. 
We then looked at the number of unique brand variants by each of the ma major manufacturers. This chart shows that from October 2018 to September 2021, the number of capsule cigarette brand variants changed um, from 30 to 42 for BAT, which is a 40% growth, from 28 to 26 for PMM, which is a slight decline, and for JTI tripled from two brand variants in October 2018 to six in September 2021. Our findings show that capsule cigarettes have a substantial market share in Mexico with increasing popularity. We found capsule cigarettes comprised 37.3% of all, caps, uh, all cigarette sales in Mexico by sales volume, higher than the 27.3% previously estimated by Euromonitor Passport based on a combination of indirect sources. Descriptors and other product characteristics might be used to increase the appeal and to target particular populations. Concept descriptors that imply unknown flavors might incite curiosity and desire to try, especially among young people. And action descriptors might accompany other descriptors and images indicating capsules, such as the power buttons in this picture here to increase technological appeal and to emphasize the interactive aspects of the capsule, and at the same time communicate innovation, which might be particularly attractive to youth. Results from manufacturer analysis suggest that all three top selling cigarette manufacturers in Mexico expanded their capsule cigarette markets sus substantially from October 2018 to September 2021. BAT held the largest market share for capsule cigarettes overall, while JTI had the most aggressive growth in capsule cigarette sales. An increase in brand variants that corresponded with the growth in capsule cigarette sales was observed for BAT and JTI, but not for PMM suggesting that varied marketing strategies might be adopted by manufacturers. We have several policy recommendations. Policymakers should consider banning capsules and flavors for cigarettes, including descriptors or other indication of taste, aroma, or sensation. Regulating the appearance and design of tobacco products by adopting plan and standardized packaging. The picture here showing Australian plan packs is an example of what this might look like. And restricting brand variants to counter tobacco industry's tactics for market expansion. An example of this kind of regulation is Uruguay's requirement of single presentation per brand, which requires uh, cigarette companies to sell only one unique presentation of each cigarette brand. The data used in this study have several limitations. Our analysis of concept flavor, characterizing flavor, and action descriptors were based on product information provided by Nielsen. Even though we tried our best uh, verifying the information using other sources, there is a chance that the descriptions provided did not always include all information on the cigarette packs. Also, informal trade, including sales of loose cigarettes and some other illicit trade, were not captured. Even though sales of loose cigarettes are not allowed in Mexico, they are very common. Findings from national surveys show that a large proportion of Mexicans who smoke buy single sticks. So the failure to capture loose cigarette sales is a missed opportunity to understand the potential role that single sticks might play in enabling people to try new brands and new flavors, especially pricier products such as the premium 
and value for money brands that the vast majority of capsule cigarettes in Mexico fall under. Um, in addition, the field audit methodology used for traditional trade is less robust than retail scanner collection for modern trade, which could lead to greater variability of inference. As a result, findings cannot be generalized to trade channels beyond those assessed. On the other hand, the study has the strength of analyzing sales data collected at retail points through scanner and field audit, which provide rich information about cigarette market trends and are likely more accurate than indirect estimates from other sources, despite some limitations in capturing informal and illicit sales. Past research on capsule cigarette sales mostly cited estimates by Euromonitor Passport, which were based on sources such as trade associations and appear to underestimate the market share of capsule cigarettes in Mexico by 10 percentage points compared with our findings. Research on capsule cigarettes remain relatively limited despite the rapid market growth globally. Our study helps advance our, standing, our understanding of the current state of capsule cigarette sales in Mexico and tobacco companies' tactics for promoting capsule cigarettes including the use of descriptors. In conclusion, the expanding capsule cigarette market in Mexico led by major manufacturers is concerning given the products associated misconceptions of reduced harm and greater appeal among youth. Our findings underline the need for enhanced regulations to address the public health threat posed by capsule cigarettes. Thank you so much for your attention. Um, here's my contact information. Please feel free to reach out. And I look forward to your questions. And thank you so much. What a terrific presentation. And um, I don't know, to me it was terrifying to see the increases in uh, capsule cigarette sales over a relatively short time, over a three year period that you showed. Um, and also, well, you and and you'd said it, it's probably an underestimate because you could, um, you know, you you identified capsule cigarettes as best you can, but you could have missed things. So it was an underestimate or at least a conservative estimate. And I think it's also really despicable because you, your slide that showed the, the packs of the different manufacturers, the color, you know, the Marlboro pack and the Camel pack and all the beautiful colors and bright, happy colors. I mean, it's, it's, it's criminal that um, you can package a deadly product like that. I mean, it's just terrible. So I um, encourage everyone to um, add your questions to the Q&A. We already have um, a couple questions, so let me just jump in. Um, and the first question is about I, how you identified capsule cigarettes in the Nielsen data and what product attributes did you use? So it is, maybe you can just explain to folks what the Nielsen data look like. And then, I mean, you do, you did have to do some additional work to get the capsule to identify those, those packs and descriptors. So yeah, if you could explain that a little again. Yeah, thank you for that question. So the Nielsen data is a little more complicated to work with than uh, people might imagine. So the, the data set itself come with um, a number of variables. So they do provide uh, certain attributes and, and information about the products. So, and that my understanding is that uh, it varies in different countries. Um, so Nielsen does monitor uh, tobacco market in many countries, but their data set looks might look differently based on the country. In Mexico in particular, they do have a variable showing uh, whether the cigarette has capsule or not. So that's already in the Nielsen data, um, but they didn't have comprehensive information around flavors. And that's why um, 
of the, the internet searches and verification by cigarette packs became very helpful. We looked at the pack photos um, um, to, to uh, check um, the descriptors, descriptors used on, on the cigarette packs. And also we looked at the images and um, some uses of color. And I showed some examples where we could verify the Nielsen data where they said there's a capsule in, um, in this product. And on the cigarette packs, we saw those illustrations showing and, and some um, descriptors like indicating capsules. So that's how, um, what helped us verify those information. Super. So, um, so was there actually a variable called capsule in the data set? Yes, no. Was it? Is that yes. So for this particular data set for Mexico, there was actually there is actually a variable. It's called capsule, and then the values are with capsule or without. And there's a var variable for flavor, but that one is tricky. It doesn't really tell you the flavors. And we had to do more work to verify the information. Right. And it sounded like you also had to do quite a bit of work with the flavors too and trying to figure that out. So yeah, I think, I mean, it's definitely challenging, but um, it sounds like you, again, you were able to implement some me some methods that would get you at least a conservative estimate of, of these data. Um, wonderful. So another question you, you may not know the answer to this and this is fine that's fine um do you have any information about the market share of capsule cigarettes in the united states oh that is a great question so i don't have a direct answer to that um my understanding is that so it will be a little bit different because um flavored cigarettes, like flavors other than mint and menthol are banned. So almost all the capsule cigarettes in the United States would be menthol capsules. Um, I don't know the percentage, but I, I think it is our understanding that almost, most of the flavored cigarettes, meaning most of the mint menthol cigarettes in the United States are also, also contain capsules. Um, I think that's my understanding, but in terms of the market share among the total um, total cigarette sales, I'm, I don't have that number on the top of my head. No, it's a good question. I mean, my sense in, I mean, yeah, it's hard to know about sales. I mean, when you go into stores and just look at what's displayed in the power wall, you definitely don't see the packs like you, like or sh you have in Mexico, but um, yeah, it seems like a smaller proportion are have capsules, but that doesn't mean that the market share is higher or lower. So that's a good question. We'll look into that. Um, and I think, you know, we heard recently in California that has, you know, a, a jurisdiction that has implemented a total flavor ban um, that, you know, a company is being very tricky and putting in like coming up with um, some capsules that they're sort of trying to get under trying to I guess legally say are not flavors um, and I know in in Canada too when they put through their their flavor ban there were some cigarettes with capsules that had like water in them or they called them aqua was the descriptor so maybe not flavored but you know, maybe it had some of those cooling agents in, in them, so you get some sort of sensation. So, yeah, um, definitely the capsules are um, provide additional loopholes to the tobacco companies to, um, at least, you know, communicate with consumers, try and get around flavor restrictions, etc. Um, so we have a few more questions. Um, so this one's about your recommendations and uh, saying terrific presentation. Um, and the question is whether you could comment on which of the policy recommendations from uh, this work do you think might be the most effective or feasible to implement in Mexico? 
Thank you for that question. That is such a great question because we always think about policy changes and that's what we're trying to achieve. Um, so in terms of effective, I would really advocate for plan uh, packaging, plan and standardized packaging, because I, I think the packaging of the cigarettes should reflect um, the harm, the level of harms that um, they're causing. However, I can't say if that would be the most feasible one. Um, and I briefly mentioned in the introduction that tobacco, the tobacco industry has a lot more like new designs or designs they already pat uh, patented and not have not launched yet. So they can always come up with new things to, to go around any regulation. Um, that we propose. So for any policy or like regulations, we need to keep in mind that the wording needs to be uh, broad enough and not, instead of being super specific uh, to target the current designs that we are seeing, like the examples that I gave um, in the UK, that is what is happening now that the uh, tobacco companies are selling loose capsules that could be inserted into cigarettes. They're selling like special, like cigarettes that are shaped with um, recessed filters so that those loose units could be fit, could fit in like easily. And they, um, so these are out of, even though all flavors, including main, menthol and mint are uh, banned in the UK, like it really doesn't cover uh, these new innovation, uh, like new designs and, and tobacco companies are so much faster in uh, creating all these uh, new designs than the policy responses. Like it will take longer to um, ch change the, the current regulation, right? So it would be great uh, if we can make the regulation like comprehensive at our first try instead of always like uh, chasing uh, the tobacco industries, uh, food stabs, and the like. So being proactive instead of reactive. Yeah, super helpful. So we have some breaking news. A big thank you to Dr. Jenny Brown. So some data from the US. I'll just read out what she was able to find. So in the US in 2020, Flavor capsule cigarettes accounted for five and a half percent of the cigarette retail volume in the US. And then, oh, these are from earlier data. Yeah, this, so this is maybe like nine years ago. Um, flavor, the prevalence of flavor capsule use among people who smoke was around 4.3%, but it was higher among younger people. So like 9.4% among 18 to 24 year olds and even higher among Hispanic young adults at 17.3%. Um, so, I mean, that could, th those data could certainly increase, but thank you, Jenny, for sharing those, uh, sharing those data to give us that context. Um, another question here, just wondering if you came across um, cinnamon flavor cigarettes in your work? That's an interesting question. So I actually didn't, I didn't see it in Mexico. Um, and in fact, um, we didn't see, so, okay, let me take my words back. We didn't see, uh, as you saw in, in the presentation, um, we didn't see a lot of characterizing um, descriptor. So the the words that we saw that directly named um, uh, a flavor were limited to mint, menthol, and cretec. We saw a lot of concept um, flavor uh, descriptors, and I we did like internet searches to check if users or retail or manufacturer sites describe those cigarettes as containing a flavor. So yes, we did see like some description um, through our internet searches that there are like um, cigarettes with like spice flavors or like things like that. Um, but they weren't communicated explicitly. So I can't say, I didn't see a cinnamon cigarette. 
but um, there were a lot of concept um, flavors in the cigarettes that we saw. Yeah, very interesting. Um, another question, um, are there data for tobacco associated morbidities in this area where capsule cigarettes are being marketed? And so do we know anything about the harm or morbidities um, specifically for capsule cigarettes? And then also are there, what is the form of warning messages on the on the labels for these cigarettes? And I think you, you one of your slides had, I've showed pictures, but people were focusing on other things, but so maybe you can just remind us. Yeah, thank you for those questions. Those are great questions. And Thank you for asking about morbidity. That's such an important question. Um, so we know that capsules, that the chemicals in capsules um, are, are harmful. And actually by, by re independent research, but also by industry, industry research. So the tobacco industry's internal research show that these capsules contain harmful chemicals. So they, they know that these are not good to our health. Um, and in terms of the uh, warning labels, uh, Mexico has a rule around uh, warning labels on cigarette packs. I forgot um, the percentage. I would believe it's, um, so if you remember on the pack packs, they would um, occupy the, the flip top portion of, of the cigarette pack. So I would say that's less than 50%. But I also think that when you flip open your top, the, the top of the cigarette pack, you don't see that, um, uh, you don't see that warning label anymore. And also um, you might remember that some cigarette companies and some brands will use that inner frame inside that, underneath that um, flip top to, to um, add more like illustration or, or like use that part for, for marketing purposes. Um, but these are labels are pictorial labels. So they contain um, images. Yeah, thanks. And I'll just point out, I mean, in terms of health warning labels, Mexico is um, one of the better countries in terms of uh, the size of their warnings, because it's it is 30% on the front, but 100% on the back and they have requirement, some requirements for the sides as well. And they have a range of different um, uh, messages and they rotate relatively often, more, much more often than almost every other country. So we do wanna give a shout out to Mexico on that. Um, obviously there's still a lot of branding on the packs that um, something like plain and standardized plain and standardized packaging would help address uh, so that's important but um, but Mexico has you know has done well with uh, health warning labels in the past and I do want to also acknowledge Mexico that you know in January um, implemented a very comprehensive smoke free law and um, taps restrictions uh, tobacco advertising promotion and sponsorship restrictions as well. So a lot of great things going on in Mexico. Um, and then we, um, but but the story that you've told us, Toyan, uh, about the capsule cigarettes is um, terrifying and hopefully um, can be addressed soon to protect, um, you know, the f uh, future um, people who might be taking up um, this deadly um, behavior just because of, you know, how attractive uh, the companies are making the packs and communicating about what's inside them. So I think um, that's it for the questions. I just want to thank you again for just an excellent, very clear um, presentation that, as I said, is sort of terrifying to me, but um, Really, um, you did a super job telling us that story, and uh, thank you so much for sharing your work. Thank you for having me.